So, been a while since I've posted a video on YouTube. Apologies for the appearance. I'm obviously on holiday here in Dubai. So, just been for a massage and a swim. And now, obviously, in my living room. And obviously, we've just signed and sealed young Frankie Kent, which we're delighted about. And uh, I thought I'd uh, do a little video on the ins and outs, a little bit more on the transfer window. I've already done a couple of football videos, but I'll do one on this. Because obviously it's been, uh, over the last ooh, four weeks, we've been busy. But as regards to central offenders, we always, at the end of April, when we drew up our list of targets, Beavers was obviously high on the list. Championship caliber player, leader, captain type material, um, big centre half, one promotion from League One. But what we wanted to do as a club, we wanted to pair him with that young, hungry type player as well that would be an asset to the football club going forward next to the experienced player. We drew up a list, we had three names on the list. Um, Number one, excuse me, that's my alarm going off there to make a phone call to another agent. Number one on the list um, was, and people say, oh, you're wrong, it was Edmondson. No, number one on the list was Frankie Kent. We were alerted to Frankie Kent's uh, January time. We'd been watching him before. But in January, the club, obviously, we did our scouting, our analysis, everything else. The gaffer came back. We spoke to him about him. He went to see him three times, I believe. Um, I've been to see him once. And we approached Colchester end of April, start of May, just to inquire what was what was Robbie thinking. Um, obviously, Robbie didn't want to talk about it. They still had a chance at the playoffs. Um, he would have a conversation with us when the season was over. But the one thing we know about Robbie is he gets a premium for his players. He's a great chairman, and we knew we'd have to pay if we were going to get him. And we spoke to the agents as well, just to see what the story was. Would the player be in? Because sometimes you have to find out would the player be actually interested in coming, whatever else. And the agents intimated that no, he was going to go to the championship or see his contract out and then go to the championship. And they told us that the few clubs that were in for him. So we parked it. It made no sense trying to do a deal. There's no way the player was going to come. Blah, 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 blah. We moved on to option two, which was obviously uh, the boy, uh, another centre half in League Two that was well documented. And then we had obviously option number three. So we obviously then went into a prolonged period of negotiation on option number two. It was well documented, it was out there, it had been leaked to the press. Um, I'll just say this, dealing with Robbie Cowling as opposed to dealing with those other dickheads that we had issues with, he is a brilliant chairman, an ethical chairman, and I'll go into that in a little bit more. But the other player, we basically we, we negotiated with that club in Portugal at the owners conference. Barry met with the brother of the owner of that League Two club. He spoke to the owner on the phone, the lawyers. We spent four days putting a legal document together. We agreed a fee. We spoke to the player's agent. The player was on holiday. Everything was good to go. He was coming in to see us on the Friday. We knew it was gonna get leaked. It got leaked. And we knew other clubs were gonna be in. We also knew a massive iconic club was in as well. But we were still, it was intimated to us by the agent, via the player. He wanted to meet our manager. He did fancy coming to us because of what we've done in the past for players. So, again, we had it all set up for the Friday. The player was coming back on the Thursday. We were going to meet him on a Friday. And then, obviously, it was the night before or two nights before. We then got this legal email through saying, you're no longer allowed to speak to the player. We've had another offer. Your offer is now rescinded. If you want to buy him, you must give us this, double this, double that. It was ridiculous. In all my 12 years, I've never, ever had that with another football club. I understand that you want to get a premium for your player. No problem with that at all. But the ethics that go within the game is if you agree a deal with a club for X amount for your player and you agree that, you have to stand by that. There's no written rule, there's no legal contract that you have to stand by it, but you do stand by it. That's what you do as a club owner. If someone else comes in for the player and offers more money, no problem. You allow the player to speak to those clubs, the one that you've already agreed and the new one that comes in. We weren't allowed that. That didn't happen. So we basically pulled out of the deal. And the player and his FDI agent wanted to speak to us. They went and spoke to another League One club. They rang us afterwards. They still wanted to come and speak to us. The agent intimated. Obviously, the club then in League Two came back on to us and said, do you want to renegotiate? And I went mad. I sent the, the well, you can only imagine what I emailed to their lawyers, to the owner. I've never dealt with anyone like that in my life. Never will again. At that point, I said to Barry, do me a favor, give Robbie a call, um, speak to the agent again of the boy, um, Kent, just see that they still feel that way. Because we're having a right go, we're being really ambitious, maybe they'll see us as, a year down the line, hopefully a championship club. Barry got on to Robbie, Robbie was as good as gold. We obviously did a double deal, as everyone's aware, for Schmodox and for Kent. Uh, Robbie was a gentleman the way he did the deal. 
he always said he wanted to do a deal with us. We've tried to buy players in the past. Um, basically, once we'd agreed a deal, we spoke to the agent. The agent works for the Stella Group, big, big agency out there that represent Gareth Bale. And David Manassi, who represented Frankie himself, was absolutely spot on. He was brilliant. He was away at, I think, Bale's wedding. And he did the deal with Barry. We got the boy in on Wednesday. Uh, we had a great chat. He met the gaffer. He then was waiting for his parents to come back off holiday, which was going to wait over until I think it was Friday. And obviously then the alarm bells start ringing after what happened with the previous situation. Um, we knew it would get out there in the press. Lo and behold, it's leaked to the press. And then you've got an uncomfortable 72 hour window. So we'd agree obviously terms with the player. We'd agree terms with his club, but it was the player who had to decide. We wanted to speak to his parents. And obviously today is Saturday, so yesterday, um, we were we were again told, look, um, uh, late last night, we wanted to get the deal done today, but we were told late last night, and this is typical of football, a uh, championship club has come in, one that's just appointed a new manager, and basically agreed a fee. I smelled a rat, I thought, oh, here we go again, paranoia. They agreed a bigger fee, and they also offered the player 60 odd percent more in wages. So when I was told this at like half 11 my time in Dubai last night, I was like, that's it, another deal. You know, that we've either been beaten to the punch by a championship club, championship football, because all these players now, and a lot of them for me too, they're obsessed with playing in the championship. But in fairness to the player, the player rang our manager last night and said, I don't want to go to the championship club that's come in. I want to sign for you. Um, I love what you went through with me the other day. Um, I know Peter was the right club for me. You've been ambitious. I want to play. I want to play football the right way. And I've turned down the, the deal from the championship club. Robbie had kept us uh, informed of everything. He, he could have done what the other club did. He could have pulled us out of the deal. He could have gone with more money. He didn't do that. He kept Barry uh, abreast of all the information. He was an absolute class act. So to Robbie Cowling, I want to say a big thank you because after all the crap last week and dealing with those other dickheads, it was absolutely refreshing to deal with another proper owner who knows how to run a football club, who knows how to do a transfer deal, and we owe you a big favour. And I've said that already via Baz. Uh, anything you need, we're there to help within reason. And obviously Frankie came in today, did his medical, signed all the forms, and obviously we've announced the deal. So myself, Jason, Randy, really, really happy. This was one we were all sweating on because you can build a sports car and you can put all the bits together, but sometimes, you know, you can have the engine, you can have the outside, it looks smart, but if you don't have the gearbox, if you don't have the seat to sit in, and this was a really big part of the jigsaw puzzle, finding that playing out center half next to Beavers because the gaffer wants to play a certain way. So we're nearly done. Everyone knows that we're after a, a central midfielder, somebody with a bit more experience, if maybe somebody not, but we've got a few irons in the fire. We're very relaxed about those final one or two pieces we want to add. Everyone reports back on Monday. We're very excited with the squad we have now. If we were to start tomorrow, we'd be okay. We think we do quite well. We brought in the right type of player for Peter United, um, the right type of player that wants to join our club for the right reasons. What I loved about Frankie's interview was, he said it himself, Phil said in the interview, you know, players come here and then they get big moves afterwards and they go on to a bigger league. And Frank, he said, I actually want to do that with Peterborough. And that was refreshing to hear. As good as we are at advertising to players that, you know, come to Peterborough, you can go for millions in the future. We don't mind that, but at the same time, we love our players who just want to come and join us for the right reasons, not just financial, but to help us go up the leagues. And myself and the owners, the partners, were very ambitious with what's happening with the stadium, what's happening now, we want to get out of League One and into the Championship. We want to sustain Championship football and we want to have a right go. So we feel we're signing the right type of players that are, that are the right age group, uh, the, right, the right kind of characters for the football club that we think are going to settle in really well with the dressing room to what we already have. And we're very, very excited. Now, with that, there's going to be some outgoings. There are players that are on the transfer list. There are players that will be surplus to requirements that we will you know, get transfer fees from. So for those asking, yes, we've brought plenty in. I think it's eight now, but there are going to be a few leaving. So you'll probably find five, six will leave. And that's just called good business. Uh, you don't have the gaff with too big a squad. Uh, you want to do it the right way. So again, really excited. Monday it all starts. Uh, I got back from holiday next week. This was a big one. Right now we're working on, as I said to you, I'm going to be on the phone shortly. And this is about obviously adding to central midfield. And um, yeah, we're being really ambitious this summer with our recruitment. We've been really ambitious with our targets. I'm not trying to hype things up, but we obviously want to win promotion this year and we're, we're very serious. And uh, final bit on that, I just want to say well done to uh, Grant McCann, who's got his chance with Hull. And uh, good luck to him moving up to the championship. 
I always said I was a good spotter of talent. And yes, I did fire that talent, but sometimes great managers become great managers in their second and third jobs. And the first job is they start learning phase. So um, I'll sign out for now. I'll get back to my holiday and uh, want to wish you all a good summer. And I'll post a business video in the next couple of weeks for the, for the people who follow this channel for business reasons and to learn about business and stuff. So really exciting day today. Really happy to have signed uh, Frankie Kent. And uh, these Saturday signings I quite like. Mo Issa was on a Saturday. And obviously Frankie's landed on a Saturday. So stay tuned for next Saturday. Thank you, posh fans and football fans in general. Enjoy.